in the cab of the 860. I just picked up the header. I'll show you kind of what it looks like. Air conditioning, heater, gauges. Some of them are working, some of them aren't. Radio. controls over here. This is your variable speed control. The switch is up and down for your header. Uh, this is an auxiliary for up and down for a different header. Lights, throttle. This is an emergency switch. If you hit that, you can just tap it and it kicks out your front end. So if you pick up a big something and you got to stop right away, that just stops your front end right away. Uh, fuel shut off, four-way flasher, signal lights, cylinder speed control, you can crank it up and down. This is the main drive and gauge uh, lever. This sets your front uh, bay cylinder clearance. Got right and left brakes, they're tethered together right now. Clutch and unloading auger off to the side there. Push it down to make it go on, and it'll tip this way and that way to make it go in and out. When you're hooking up, you try and line uh, these uh, circular pins up with these hooks on the header. And you've got just a little bit of room. Everything needs to be straight, level, and flat to hook up. And uh, once you hook up the top, you can lift it up and then do the rest of it. I'll uh, Got some penetrating fluid on that. That'll lock the top in place. Those lock down on either side. And then there's a couple of these flip overs here that uh, just catch on the bottom and flip up tight. And then to transfer the power, there is a, it's kind of a circular, or sorry, a square shaped I don't know what you call it, but you just move this uh, square shaped thing across here. And this is this is the drive side and this is the side for the header. And you put this thing in here and then put a pin in and that's what transfers the power from the combine to the header. And uh, this square pin just goes in to keep it from falling out of there. So there's really only one, two, three, four, five things and one set of wires to hook, hook up and then your header's on. Uh, if you're really quick and you got two headers all cleaned up and ready to go, you can pull into the yard and, and switch headers in, in about 20 minutes is kind of how it's set up when you're practiced. It takes a few more back and forths when you haven't done it for three years to get lined up, but it's on there now. I turned it by hand. Everything seems to be turning, so I'm going to kick it in while... See what happens here. Electronic variable speed. Uh, it's kind of a little motor here. It's not working. It was a little cranky last time. So I'm going to pull it off and see if I can't clean it up and get it working better.
I'll bet a lot of people don't use this type of moisture tester anymore. So Glenn's got his book out, tells him what the weight of the barley should be. That needs to go into the moisture tester. Oh, it tells you what at what it's at what temperature and what moisture that your grain is good exactly what. So he's got the thermometer in there. So off the hop, right off the combine, Glenn said this felt tough. So he's weighing the amount in there he needs to make it zero. All right. Calibrate the machine. Calibrate. Right, the needle at the bottom. This machine is so cool. Put the green in the top. Oh, that filled it right up. And then there's a little flapper thing that opens, releases it in there. Your machine's on. And then you take it as low as you can. Yeah. And then this reading here. We look at that and what the moisture is, and then we check the book. So it tells us where our grain's at. Temperature. Te oh, sorry, yeah, temperature. Thanks. So the machine says 24. Okay. The temperature says 30 degrees Celsius, 29, 30 degrees Celsius. Ah, it's warmer than I thought it was. What's our temp, what's our 24? 24, yeah. So that tested 14.9, 14.8 dry. Ooh, it's really close. It's really close. We're going to leave it because... Leave it for an hour? Leave it for an hour. We'll go in an hour. Okay. Try again. Yeah. This is where I'm putting the barley super handy because it's in the yard. The last time that I brought the grain into the yard was my job. I was using the John Deere M. So it was super handy to uh, use, but it's not working. So we thought about getting it fixed up, but we've been too busy. It needs new tires. And that'll be a couple thousand bucks for a tractor that we only use a couple of times a year. Uh, whereas this one here we use a lot, but uh, it's not, I think it's not hard to run the PTO for the auger with it. It's just a little bit more walking around for sure. Glenn's just putting the tins in the bin for me, which is good. We just ran a sample. That sample you saw was a little bit tough. So we're doing some odds and ends here and we'll be ready to go by the time they're done. Okay, so our second sample is about 45 minutes later. We're at 20 on the machine, 30 degrees for the thermometer, and our book says meter reading at 20. So 20 and 30. Ooh, we're right down at the end here. Oh yeah, we're 11.9 now. She good and dry. First repair, replacing a thingy <laughs> on the pickup. <laughs> uh, started busting apart. Yeah, I don't know. You run it in the yard and everything seems like it's going okay and then you put it under load and this is what shows up. That's okay. Glenn's got this new one here. He's not impressed with it. So you can't buy these old ones with the metal anymore, but what you can buy is these things with these plastic. How long are those gonna last, eh, guys? And they cost a fortune. Oh, the old ones did. Oh, okay. Pardon me. 
Anyway, you can see where like the metal fingers would be so much better for picking up in the rocks and the, close to the ground and stuff like our swaths are. So we'll see. Any bets? How long it lasts? I guess that's what happens when you can't get replacement parts anymore. All right. He had to move this first bar back a little bit to make room for this uh, this new thing because it's tight. And what he's got to do is he's got to weave this long pin in there. And uh, yeah, you're doing a good job, Glenn. Be back in no time flat. So we used to have CB radios in the truck, like probably a lot of other people did. And uh, so you'd call the person and let them know that you were full. And then uh, when the combine was done, uh, because we'd pick up on the run, uh, it was just a double click to uh, let you know that you were done. You could go dump your load or wait or whatever, depending on how full you were. So we don't have uh, radios anymore, but we got cell phones and, um, give each other a call if we needed help. Glenn and I, so when it was, when we still had the uh, CB radios and uh, Glenn and I were combining, we combined a few years by ourselves for whatever reason. And so we got these uh, walkie talkie things that would work because there was a lot of people listening to the CB radio. And, and if I needed something, uh, I would just call Glenn. Usually in those days, I was driving the combine, but there's no way I'm driving that combine right now and being responsible for something breaking on it. So I'll just drive the truck. It's all good with me. <laughs> Oops, badger hole. Oh, shoot. And see that one. Windows closed. It's about to get itchy. I find it's just as easy to, uh, we're right near the corner. It's just as easy to back up so we're not running over uh, a bunch of swaths. And because I've been stacking hundreds of bales lately, I've got my backing out badge. Don't have to worry about it. Oh, let's put the windows down here. Holy smoly. My air conditioning ain't working. Oh wait, this truck never really had any. Did have a fan, but uh, Glenn disconnected it because the thing's just blowing hot air. It doesn't matter what the setting is right now. So it's like, oh heck no, I don't need that when it's 28, 29 degrees Celsius. Perfect day for uh, combining though. Happy day. In order to lift the box, I gotta engage the clutch. I pull that lever, and then this one goes all the way in. Oh, left the clutch off first, and then this one goes all the way in. It's pretty full, so I'm gonna stop it before too long. I have the parking brake set here, so, but I still got my food on the brake just for insurance. come up to then you pull it out about halfway and it'll stop the box too much and it goes back down it's persnickety like everything else around here all right I'm not tall enough to see in the box ah oh, shoot I moved my things over I'm gonna repark my truck here all right Glenn said to look at the bin Make sure the tins are seating in there properly so the grain is there. 
Uh, this top door apparently swings. So let's swing this door. Oh, it's got a top and a bottom lock. Oh. Hey, there's bugs in there. Okay, giving this a little pat. I'd say they're seating properly. Glenn's been keeping up with uh, Bale and the Straw off the barley. So we quit, I don't know, 7.30, at a, right around dusk or something. And then he bails till dark. And then uh, the next morning he comes out, services, everything. We do it all again. So we're re you're readjusting the sieves. Yeah. Because they're going to be f finer for yeah. oats. Those are the sieves. That's the things that we had. To, that's the first things we took out of the combine when we replaced the straw walker. Five sixteenths for the barley. I had it a little bit narrower. That makes sense. Yeah. You just slide the adjustment till your drill bit. It's in there, snug. Yeah. And these are just initial settings. Here you can tell you blue in the face. Half inch and half inch at the top. They were both set at 9 sixteenths, so just a little bit tighter. Boy. Ben's gonna crunch the numbers and I'll make sure to tell you guys how many bushels of milk we got for our barley that was grown on stubble. <laughs>